Yeah, hey, how are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get into the BQH? And Well, that was a, is an interesting story. I had intentions of becoming an English teacher in Japan, so <laughs> that obviously didn't work out. Yeah. I had like a like a big journey where I got so depressed that I didn't come out of bed for like you know for a couple of years almost I was staying in bed all of all of the time Mm -hmm. it was like it was during COVID as well and I was just I don't know I was just quite depressed at that point and so it was like two years of those crazy sort of things happening and and then it was like my spirit guide started to introduce themselves to me and And what did that look like it was quite a surprise um well I went to kinesiology sessions I had kinesiology sessions before Mm -hmm. not really any intention of becoming a healer or anything like that Mm -hmm. I want I just liked the set myself but you know, I had I had the Canadian say a few things that are quite interesting, and she's really quite intuitive. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that she said, she she said that you know, like my twin flame energy was there in the room, and she said a couple of other things that were was really quite surprising to me. Like I only had a small percentage of my soul in my body and a couple of quite unusual things came up in these kinesiology sessions Mm -hmm. and sometimes I would have dreams beforehand and where like you know I would have like some sort of thing related to past life memories come up yeah and then I would have the session Mm -hmm. and then it was all getting a bit a bit strange and then and then of course there was this moment where I decided to to connect with this energy that had come through and it was not what I thought it was at all (laughs) what did Um, you think it was well I just thought like to be honest I just thought I was you know well, I thought I, I knew I was a star seed, but I didn't know very much apart from that. I was like, you know, sort of thinking that maybe this energy was just an extraterrestrial sort of guy or something that, you know, was trying to connect with me. Mm-hmm. Then I sort of realized that it was a lot bigger than that. He sort of, um, like, I connected to that energy again. And it was like, um, like in the dream that I had, on like his eyes at me and then I woke up and it was incredibly profound and I was like woke up in tears and I was like this was a couple like maybe a day before I had the kinesiology session yeah I was like well what's going on here I, I've never sort of had this sort of experience before mm-hmm. so I didn't know how to explain such a thing and so then after that I guess, then I decided to connect in with that energy again once I knew it was there. Mm -hmm. And I had a really, another really strange thing happen where I could feel all of the veins in my body. I could feel like light going through the veins. Wow. And so then, you know, that was pretty crazy and, so I just sort of sat with that. I didn't go any further with that for a bit. Mm-hmm. And then I decided to connect with the energy again. And I was like quite emotional from this again, as imagine. Yeah. It was quite a strong energy to connect to. I didn't know who it was or what it was. And then after that point, it was like something was like telepathically dropped in my head. Mm-hmm. name Polon and then I looked it up I didn't know much about sort of Greek mythology or anything but that was the being and I was like this can't be correct you know <laughs> yeah. like, 
Are you saying that my twin flame energy is this being? Yeah. And I was like, you know, this is insane. Uh, but I had my tarot cards out. I'd learned tarot, so I mm-hmm. started pulling cards. I just started pulling cards. The best thing that I could know at the time was mm-hmm. to start pulling cards about this situation. And what I found out was that it was true. It was all true. Like I got all the aces in my spread in regards to my higher self and, you know, its relation with this being. Mm-hmm. And then I was, oh, this is cuckoo bananas. I can't <laughs> tell you on this. So, the whole of last year, you know, it was like one series of transformations after another. Like this sort of process really kicked off the at the end of, well, maybe 2021. Mm-hmm. And then for the whole of last year, this being was coming to me and helping me to heal PCOS symptoms and my depression. And so... So when that happened for you, were, were you um, in Japan? Ready back home? I, I was back home. I couldn't get back to Japan. Okay. But, um, I tried to go and live in Japan. And at the beginning of 2020, I applied debt program, mm-hmm. which is basically like an overseas English teaching job program. Okay. Where you just go and teach kids. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, it looks like I was getting it, but I didn't get it. And it was incredibly upsetting. Yeah. Every other sort of place that I applied to. I applied to many, many of these types of jobs and I never got a call back to any of them, even to the ones where they said, look, you only need a heartbeat to get in in this company. <laughs> you know, they'll take anyone. Well, they didn't take me. <laughs> yeah, obviously it doesn't, uh, it's not a great feeling, is it, once uh... no. I was you like getting rejected from jobs. Yeah, like that that kind of yeah, rejection really set me back. Mm. I like if I wasn't depressed before, <laughs> I was even more depressed now. So, yeah. yeah. So that happened in twenty twenty. And then the whole lockdown thing happened. And so I was like, I'm not going to get to Japan anyway. Yeah. So it was just one miserable thing after the other. Really. Mm. And when the COVID sort of like really started ramping up, were you having more communication with them? Or um, look- not really. I yeah. was just, it sounds bad, but I was just playing video games in my bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, I had my, um, I couldn't get a job. And there was, like, no hope of me getting a job after the whole debacle started as well. Yeah. Everyone was scared, especially where I was anyway. hmm So, like, the best I could do really was to learn how to do nails at home. So I made myself a, a shop where I sold, you know, clothing and press-on nails and jewellery. hmm And that was the best I could do at the time. Yeah. 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 But apart from that, it was pretty miserable. Yeah. So when did they start? Um, when did you get introduced to your higher self? Um, probably last year, actually. But if I look at it, it was maybe a long time ago and I just didn't even realise it. Mm-hmm. You know, those sorts of moments in your life where, you realise, oh, that was my higher self or you know, that that was her. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I would be shown things, but, you know, I was kind of like just very vain into fashion. Mm-hmm. Not so, you know, it was, it was a nice sort of little thing, but I didn't think it because I was too interested in, well, you know, like, I don't know, shoes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so who introduced themselves first to you? Was it um, your higher self or was it um, your guides? Um, it was definitely 
my higher self. It was like I had kind of images of this sort of being that I would express like sort of in my art and um, fashion illustrations especially. Mm -hmm. I actually I actually am qualified to be a fashion designer as well. I did um I did fashion design diploma so you know little bits of my higher self would come my work Mm -hmm. and I tried to go to UTS and I got in and I tried to go further with fashion design there but you know they kind of told me like you know these drawings that you represented you know that higher aspect of myself Mm -hmm. fashion drawing they told me that if I kept drawing like that you know that I I should basically just leave and so I decided like you know what they're not going to respond so I just left. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that uh, would have been dehart- disheartening for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> one set of failures, you know, in front of the other. But, you know, I'm sure, like, it all leads to something eventually. Yeah, exactly. I mean, mm. you know. I remember when I was um, younger, I used to, um, I think... I went for like a long while where I didn't have a job and I didn't really know what I was going to do with myself. Yeah. And then my mum would, you know, tell her friends about it. <laughs> and then they'll, <laughs> yeah. Oh, they'll, yeah, they'll try and, um, I don't know, father me into, like, she'd t- tell like the male, because my parents divorced when I was 16. So they sort of, she tried to get like a fatherly figure to sort of like teach me or on how to be, a good citizen, I guess, <laughs> and, you know, find a job and, you know, be part of society and whatever. But I was just like, oh, I don't know what I want to do, but I don't, you yeah. know, I know I don't want to just do anything. Um, yeah, that, that was like me. I was like, um, well, I was trying, I was trying my darndest to mm-hmm. sort of do what I loved, but, yeah. you know, it was just like, getting like blown back from all of these things like including you know fashion design and and all of this this other stuff and and art is fine art at university as well I did a year of fine art and you know they're all like oh you know art is you know art can be anything you want it to be yeah and then they were like oh except what you do Elizabeth except that (laughs) we don't like that (laughs) It was, funnily enough, it was, like, all art with, you know, angelic beings in it. So mm. I think I knew even then, like, I was making sort of linograph sort of things, you know, where you are etch into plastic plates and whatnot with, you know, angelic beings mm-hmm. and all sorts of other things. And, you know, they didn't particularly like that. No, I can imagine that one. Because it was too detailed and they said that I should make things more abstract, but I don't know. That's just, you know, I can abstract things, but detail my style at the time. And unfortunately, I got a lot of art block from those experiences. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure, because, you know. Once you can't, you know, like uh, she said on the last session, how um, when they couldn't um, box you into something, they just, you know, sort of like created a box. Yeah. Just when you were younger, but, you know, it obviously yeah. just continues on until you do something to, I guess, um, comply to what they're saying to you, to, yeah. you know, to be part of society or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, no matter how hard I tried, they couldn't. Like, even at the things that I thought that I was good at, I couldn't comply in the way that they wanted me to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was always sort of thinking, like, oh, like, what am I actually going to do with my life? There seems to be actually nothing out there for me. Yeah. (laughs) Until, like, I read this book about QHHT, you know, Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was, yeah, then I, I like read a few like of these 
scripts of sessions and whatnot. And mm-hmm. I was really sort of captivated by the Atlantis material, especially. Yeah, which ones did you start off with? The books. Um, I think it was. It was the the Canon Hidden Sacred Knowledge. And what else? It's the um, the Atlantis book by the. I'll, I'll just read it. It's the Hypnosis Journey to Atlantis. Yeah, that book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That book. But, yeah. Mostly, it was the it was the hidden sacred knowledge book. Well, that one by Dolores Cannon. That one really sort of. I was like, wow, you know. Mm-hmm. The the stuff, the little bits on Atlantis in those types of things, like really, I don't know, it kind of blew my mind. And this was like last year. And what else did I read that sort of brought me into a higher awareness of things? Well, it was like almost like my spirit guides picked out a couple of reading materials that would activate me. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that they, uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, they <laughs> just recently recommend me all these books. Yeah, the book that, that really activated me was I'm just gonna read it. It's The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life by Brunvalo Mercedes. And that mm. one had all of this sacred geometry in it. I had both books of them. Oh, wow. And just briefly, what's that about? Um, that one is about it's it's about all of this sacred geometry that exists in Egypt and and all of this sort of yeah. The first book is very mathematical. Mm-hmm. The second book goes into some of the things that they've found in the Egyptian, you know, temples and tombs and whatnot. That's yeah. very things that are a little bit more abnormal Mm -hmm. like um for example there's you know pictures that look like giant light bulbs and pictures that look like you know cliffs that look like helicopters and stuff like that oh wow and um yeah it's a really interesting book Mm -hmm. and then you know went into like all of the sacred geometries and the Ankh pattern and whatnot and the Ankh especially like I don't know activated me as well. There was a lot of sacred geometry activations that occurred before I went to the BQ for the path. Mm-hmm. And did you where did you find so how come you chose bqh instead of qhht did you look into the did you research both of them and decide the bqh instead yeah well i researched the qhht and i really wanted to do that one Mm -hmm. and then you know i like the h came up with it as well like i read something online about it that that is you know two modalities Mm -hmm. and i'm just I looked at both websites and I was like, well, the BQH is cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, which one that I should go with. And I was going to go with the QHHT. Mm-hmm. But then I did the cards on it. And because, you know, I'm just, you know, stuck. it was just like a year of pulling cards, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did the cards on it and the cards were like, definitely go with the bqh so i was like okay i'm going to go with that and they said to not do qhhp Mm -hmm. they said not to do that one they said to do the bqh Mm -hmm. i was just oh well i I didn't know why i was like you know there was there was something about restriction Mm -hmm. but there wasn't much other information and now I know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's become very apparent to me. Mm. You know, it's like I've got better with card reading. 
yeah and sort of see all of the all of the spreads that I've pulled sort of coming true in a sense. And that's just like completely like wigged me out a bit. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was like um when I did the 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 QHHC level one, I wanted to do the level two because they really like amped you up on the level one. And mm. I was like, oh, I want to do level two, but it was too expensive. And I'm like, and then other practitioners that I'd sp- uh, I had spoken to and done sessions with, they said, um, maybe you should try. Well, they didn't even say you should try that. They, they just uh, they they were talking about this other one, BQH, and I'm like, what's that? And you know, they were. Um, talking about how it's it allows for people to bring in other modalities, like you know, obviously you like um, pulling out cards and things like that. Yeah. So, like something like that would be frowned upon <laughs> before a QHHP yeah. session, I would yeah. assume. But yeah, yeah now, now that I know, it would definitely be frowned upon for somebody who's like a card reader to go into this. <laughs> yeah and like you know that's the um thing that I love and I always tell people this that you know that's what I love a big, about BQH that you're encouraged to you know see what works for you and see what um you know what you can to make it your own you know we don't and that's the one of the things that Dolores said as well in one of her, of her books she's like you know I want my students to go further yeah um, so, yeah so that was really good. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I completely agree that it has, like, you know, such good, you know, bones. Should, like, it should go further. Mm. I feel like, you know, with, with the cars, that was just my first sort of exploration into sort of work because I was watching Tarot by Jane on YouTube for a while and then she was taken off YouTube and I always, I found it incredibly interesting. Mm-hmm. And just loved what she did. So, you know, I started doing the cards myself and sort of, you know, I watched so many of her videos that I actually learned the method of it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I just, I just loved, you know, watching her so much. Mm. But, yeah, like, um, like what I've found is that the cards give you like a quite an elementary sort of channeling of your higher self. Mm-hmm. However, you know, when you go into the BQH, like it often just so much expands on whatever card reading out. Like there's just so much more information there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you took the course on and then how did you find it? Um, I found it really good. Like I've, I've been to university before. I've done like so many courses. This one was like really like walk in the park. Really good. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm a really I learn really easily. Oh that's so good. really easy for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's just that's just me because you know, like I pick up sort of a book and absorb it like a sponge if I'm really interested in it. Mm-hmm. Which just comes really handy, doesn't it? Especially with things that, you know, your higher self wants you to learn about. Yeah, absolutely. To get you up to speed, I guess. Yeah, about certain methods and whatnot. Mm. Yeah. But apart from that, I didn't read that, um, that many QHHT books until much, much later. Mm-hmm. And I read, like, the rest of Dolores' books. And I was just like, oh, it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, what did you – so you booked yourself in for a session? Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, after I read maybe like two books around the QHHT, I then booked myself a session and, well, I didn't know what fully come – fully come along with it but it was quite dense it wasn't like the sessions in those books mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it wasn't like that at all it wasn't all like you know evolved sounding or neat or you know you know how some of the extraterrestrials and the Dolores canon books they sound very very evolved and mm. 
or the higher self in this book sounds very involved and and whatnot and like you know the beings or whatever that comes through. And mine was kind of like I don't know, like there was crying and and swearing and saying. Like, I hate the dark ones and, you know, I hate what they've done, you know. Yeah, yeah. And how do you think uh, your practitioner handled it? Um, I think there was, like, shock at some points. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I don't know. There was – I looked I looked back to the recording and she's kind of going, like, okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, crap. <laughs> so it was really out of pocket yeah because yeah. you know you don't like you know like the lawyers would say you get potato lives usually like yeah you do, do yeah that's usually but this one was not a potato life it was full no. of it was just full of such drama and traumatic things and mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness and yeah stuff that Stuff that I don't think would even be in those sorts of books because it was too hard going. Yeah. Too hard going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, um, you know, it, they don't prepare you for um, mm-hmm. to handle the hard stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, um, like, I read it on the BQH forum, like, things like that, like, what to be um, expecting you know, like the the would you know, and the thing that I love about the forum is that there's so many people that have the input, and you can research at your leisure, and you know, people have asked different questions, and you know, like, how do you handle this situation, sort of thing, and then yeah, yeah like Candace is so imp- informative as to what she, um, you know, how she, to help the newbies. As to, you know, if you have suffered, like, say, sexual abuse and then mm. somebody comes to you that's been an abuser, how are you going to handle that? Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Like, that's, like, you need to be prepared, mentally prepared. Not, It's not all going to be, like, you know, in, I guess, like, that. how they teach you that, you know, oh, yeah, you're going to go to a scene and then, you know, because sometimes you have to, like, really hustle from the start from the get-go like what are you gonna do next yeah 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 no um my first session, I don't think that I, I don't think that it would have been put in the book well maybe it would be I'm, I'm not quite sure maybe it was like you know too too hardcore for that but I did get the heat I needed I absolutely yeah. did that at the time and it was mm-hmm. absolutely needed to do that in that way. Yeah. And like my, it was crazy because um, there was parts of my experience where like the the conscious mind of myself was like, I guess, scared of the energy of how much energy that I had from myself. Like it was frightened at some points that like if you know there was too much energy from my being that it would perspire mm-hmm. and that I guess up in other sessions that I've had too that you know the you know the the reason why the soul is such a small aspect is because the energy is so big and I guess you know from like from all of the things that I've read about that sort of thing, it, it seems that like a lot of stars, their energy comes in a bit later. Yeah, like at 25, I think, Lumina said. Yeah. Like the whole aspect 25. of them um, integrate. 25 or 30. Mm-hmm. But it was like, I don't know if it was that traumatic because of, I guess, the how much I've had to step down and those people weren't around in that time when Dolores was doing the majority of books. Like I was kind of born in the 90s, so, you know, and she was doing all her stuff in the 70s and 80s mm-hmm. and then the 90s as well. But I was a child then. 
And how was um, growing up for you? Did you, did um, it seem like you were missing something or? It was just unusual, I guess. Like, you know, I would see things in my room and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then I would have, my, like, I actually saw a grey alien in my room one night. <laughs> And mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be in there. So um, maybe I was like five years old or something. I was really young. But I remember like thinking, you know, oh, well, like, how do I make it go? And then I just like made this little ball of light with my hand. It sounds wow. crazy. Mm. But I, could, I, could, I could actually see this thing. Uh-huh. And then I threw it at it and it ran away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I I remember doing that. Mm-hmm. And that was certainly different. That was something that was, um, I just thought maybe as I got older, like, I think I forgot all about that until, like, later on. And then I had this memory return of when I did that. And then I was like, mm-hmm. Oh crap, that did actually happen. <laughs> and my foot yeah. just was there and it sort of came out from behind the toy chair in a sense. Mm-hmm. Really, really strange. And like, you know, I was like thinking, you know, maybe when I was older, I thought that I just dreamed spot. But at the time, I actually pinched myself to check if I was dreaming or not because I'd see all sorts of things in my room. Yeah, because um, I, I I think it, it was in the Atlantis uh, session that we had that she was saying that she could be um, have holograms coming from her hands. Is that? Yeah, that, that, yeah. Was, um, that was really crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but, and how she uh, teach people like that. Yeah, so that mm. you know, she, like the, the little child me had that sort of ability to have this little ball of light holographic in the hands yeah, and throw it at these beings that were bothering me in my room. <laughs> I just wanted them to go away. Yeah. I wanted them to piss off because you know, <laughs> I was trying to sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when did you get um, introduced to Arcana? Oh, that was, that was my first session, my first QHT session. Mm-hmm. I wondered who the being was who was in my room the majority of the year. You know, like it sort of came around like early last year and I was like, well, what's this thing that I keep seeing in the corner of my eye? You know, something's always there in my room. Mm-hmm. And like I just wondered if it was good or bad and, then, you know, I – to do the tarot on it and it was like no it's a it's a protective one it's okay Mm -hmm. so you know I wasn't so concerned about that but then I was just like well who is it (laughs) and then I had a kinesiology session and you know and the the woman was like who's my kinesiologist she was like um oh he has a very Christ-like sort of energy and I was like well who is it then and, you know, that, that came out. Yeah. Being that was tending to my physical body, making sure that it didn't heat up from all of this light or activations or things that are happening, making sure that it doesn't perspire, mm-hmm. which was kind of a little bit freaky to find out. But, yeah, just, yeah, my mind's been blown. This year, yeah. last year, yeah. As well, yeah, mostly last year because I had no idea about anything really until you know, mm. like I, I looked at you know some spiritual stuff occasionally, but like you know, and of course had kinesiology sessions, but apart from that, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna go. And- live in Japan and play video games and, you know, buy more shoes and (laughs) stuff like that. Yeah, so you've really stepped it up this year. Yeah, this year (laughs) year I really stepped it up. I stopped being a (laughs) witch. Yeah. (laughs) Because, yeah, I was just sort of, 
I was a bit of a weeb and just really sort of interested in Japan and not really in much else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, you know, when you, how do you perceive uh, Lumina in sessions? Um, I kind of perceive her as like having a very terror black face and like kind of doe eyes. Mm -hmm. And she looks quite young in the face, has like round sort of cheeks and and dark hair. Mm -hmm. And the dark hair is, you know, a bit wavy and she has like a bit of a side fringe going on. But the first image I sort of saw of her was a kinesiology session and I didn't know who it was at the time, didn't know that she had this history where, you know, she been in battle on earth a very long time ago with these gods, the Greek gods. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that, but the first sort of image I saw of her was she was wearing this golden armour. And all the other sort of angelic beings sort of crowding around her, sort of like, you know, hugging her and making sure that she's okay. But that was like, I just saw her in armor and I didn't know about any of that other stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a, a few illustrations that you have, um, you have done on um on the sessions that we do on youtube so i got asked as to where do those illustrations come from and that's obviously from your memory as to how you you perceive her or you perceive what you see in the sessions yeah yeah i do have like um a picture of apollo that i do you know must share it at some point because yeah um but like, yeah, the one with the golden armor and whatnot, that especially the one that I remember. And then there's, you know, there's ones where I remember she had white hair as well. It's like she likes to change up her hair color sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it seems like, yeah, she puts on a, a movie for you, you were saying last time. Yeah, no, it's um, it's unusual. It's like she just waffles on and then you know, puts on like a little movie for <laughs> my conscious mind to sort of watch yeah. while it's going on that's, that's sort of related to this stuff. So I'll see the things happen and then she'll like, you know, waffle on about what is happening. Mm-hmm. It's uh, interesting, the one with Akashic Records, how she was saying, you were saying that... Um, that you could see the the guy that was looking after it. Yeah, the the, the record guy, the records dude. Mm, yeah, he like he kind of looked like Dumbledore in the first Harry Potter movie. Mm-hmm. Like a big sort of wizardy beard, and his robes were sort of gold and white. Sort of. And you know, and he had long hair as well, so really wizard looking. Yeah, yeah. Really, because they didn't have a hat. And then he sort of came out and he was like, hey, you can't tell them that. <laughs> 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 hey, wait a second, you know, like, just be careful with what you're telling them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is fair enough. He forgot like... about that sort of thing. Yeah. He forgot that not everyone would be able to look at certain people doing these things. Exactly, because it'd be a long, a lot to take on, especially that one that we did where, um, you know, she was saying about the um, all the things, all the yeah, all the things that's happening to the children or whatnot. Yeah, that would be really hard for people to handle. Mm. And I guess that's why maybe all of that stuff didn't come out in the Dolores material. Maybe because it was too hard for people to handle until now. Mm. Maybe that's the theory that I sort of had with some of this really, really dark and confronting information is that, you know, maybe this information is like time-sensitive release. Like we definitely weren't meant to hear about it then. Mm. But I think now it's the right time, which is, I guess, it's why she's sort of like hurried along and, you know, 
<laughs> Harry, do you want to, you know, so she can relay the message and um, and provide these teachings for us? Yeah, well, it's kind of like, well, just the things that happened. And, you know, when I started doing research into this, this topic about, you know, what happens, like, in these satanic sort of things, it was like, you know, that gave me even more depression. So. <laughs> yeah, it's for long. But, like, deep down, I, I didn't want it to be true, but deep down when I first heard about this sort of stuff, like, deep down I knew it was true. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, some part of myself had, you know, had experienced something to do with this. I just didn't know what. Mm-hmm. Because you mentioned that you woke up, you sort of like came to in one of the bits that she was doing. She was, is that right? Yeah. 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 But um, I think it was just cause the, the main wake up point when Apollo was in my dream. I didn't know who it was. I was just like, this looking, you know, blonde guy. Um, <laughs> I didn't know who he was. And then, you know. And that kind of revealed itself to me much later. Mm-hmm. But he shone this sort of light in my eyes. And that was like that point where I began to start to wake up. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting. How did you perceive the solar flash when she was talking about it? Um, like I perceived it as like a, like a big sort of, blissful thing that happens but my conscious mind was upset because um in my first the first ever session that I had like it's like my being wants to respond to the solar flash and you know explode itself a little bit as well so my conscious mind was very much interfering in my first session because it was afraid that you know with this process that you know the light within me would just become too excited and want to blow out as well Mm -hmm. in this joy and I guess this jubilation of you know this explosion of light yeah is that how you see it like an explosion of light or yeah yeah just an explosion of like of light and it just like I don't know like I that just feels like so good to me that like maybe my conscious mind was afraid that I might jump out of my body (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know it it sounds like it it would just feel really nice but you know I am like very connected to the life and all its aspects so like I've discovered that yeah I'm very much connected to that so it would be you know, and in a literal sense too, like the the light in you know everything. Mm-hmm. So it would be like it, it's a good thing. It is a good thing. It's just you know very intense, a yeah. very intense good thing. Yeah. Well, we'll see what what happens. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it can be like a beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like a burst of DMT for the whole planet or something like that. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. When we were talking about the pyramids, how did you um, see that? Um, I saw them as like, like sort of there was a white one covered in tiles and well, like, and it was very shiny and and it had the gold capstone top and and then there was the black one. Where the sphinx is now Mm -hmm. and like um in the the sphinx book it doesn't really go into that the or the books that i've read i've never heard about that i've never heard that there was another pyramid that was black Mm -hmm. in front of you know where where the sphinx is now i've never heard about that other pyramid but you know that that's how for it, it was like these two pinnacles of white and black with a gold tip. 
Mm-hmm. So they both had the gold tip? Yeah, they both had the gold mm. caps. Oh. Yeah, that's clever. And one mm. of them was for the um, mystery schools, was it? They were both mystery schools? Yeah, they were both mystery school type of, like, almost like had multiple purposes, like mystery schools and ascension chambers. Mm-hmm. Or that, you know, that higher sort of awakening to come in when you're in these structures. And the white one was like the masculine one. Mm -hmm. And the black one was the more feminine one. And it was like they were, yeah, they they both had, you know, a certain path that, that you could take and, you know, to become like a master. You had to be master of both the black and the white one. Mm-hmm. And did you see any, like, did you say that there were tunnels underneath or? Yeah, well, there was the tunnels where the Sphinx is. So that was, would be where Black Pyramid used to be mm-hmm. a very, very, very long time ago. I sort of saw the pyramids as sort of like um, Toth, you know, he did the first ones or he was the architect for the first ones. And I think those ones must have crumbled a bit and then, you know, been rebuilt later. And maybe that's why you have all of these different accounts of people remembering the pyramids being built, you know, this way or another. Because mm-hmm. it was like there was, you know, it was like, you know, building on top of an, a much, much, much earlier structure, like very, very ancient. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool that you get to see it all, like, from the first um, first person perspective or, like, a movie, I guess. Yeah. Like, you said. like a movie at those times in, in Egypt as well and where, you know, I was sort of in the courtyard and with the other Elohim things. Mm-hmm. And they were having, like, little... Little snack brought out on. The- <laughs> it, was, it was very exciting for them. It was like the event. Mm-hmm. It seems any time that they get to, um, you know, experience food, then they they get very excited. Oh well, it just depends what food it was. I think like they got excited at like you know fruit and nice little drinks, but. If you told them to eat like a leg of lamb, they'd be like, "Yuck!" <laughs> That's like that. what I think. Yeah, because they like the fruit, don't they? Like, yeah, they love the fruit and the nice drinks and herbs and whatnot. You know, and they have like very, I guess, fruity tastes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's, uh, that was funny. Well, high vibrational food. That's it. That's they, it. They loved high vibrational foods from the earth. Mm, yeah. I guess, you know, that's how you're going to keep the vibration up, wouldn't you? Yeah. The fresh. Like, because that's what Dolores would say as well, that the fresh is better. Like, the fresh is, you know, the best food that you can eat. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, fruit and whatnot. And I don't, I don't eat any fruit, which is a shame. <laughs> but I seem to really like eating fruit before, so maybe I should bring that back. No, I mostly eat like, I don't know, some chicken meals for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> some diet chicken meals. Yeah, I wonder what she'd say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was vegetarian for a while, so that yeah. must have been like that inclination to eat more fruit and vegetables but I kind of ended up just eating like you know more rice and eggs so (laughs) yeah it's quite difficult in you know in this day and age to have good food it is yeah especially um yeah it's funny how last time they were saying how Apollo was watching you eat the cookies so maybe you should have something else before (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, he definitely wasn't happy about that. He was like, "Yeah, I think 
Yeah, he he sometimes nagged me about this sort of thing when I connected with him. He was like, why haven't you gone for a walk, you know? Why haven't you gotten some vitamin D, you know? Why haven't you done this or that? <laughs> yeah. Because he was really happy. That were both, well, she was really happy when uh, you went to the beach that time. Oh, yeah. Before the session. Because I got a lot of vitamin D that day. My legs got totally burnt. <laughs> well, it just looks like a lobster. Yeah. Well, yeah, she really enjoyed that one coming yeah. in. Yeah, she wasn't as, I don't know, she was as twitchy. Yeah, yeah, no, I think because of the light activation, especially, you know, it was really helpful. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of going more into autumn and winter now, so I have to actually, you know, make sure to go out and go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, get some vitamin vitamins that way. And I've actually been been told to to go to the glyphs at Gosford, you know, the Egyptian glyphs. Oh, where's that? In Gosford. Gosford, yeah. Gosford, mm. New South Wales. And in the first session that I had the first ever session I was told, oh, you know, it'd be best to go to the Gosford Glyphs at one point. It was very hot at the time. So maybe and you know, sort of end up going there at some point. Mm. Did you she wants you to go to the pyramids at one point as well, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that no other catastrophes before the world so I can't go there. But, you know. Exactly. Especially now, like every there's like something on every every day it seems. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's just new things happening all the time. Yeah, correct. Well, we'll see what uh, what she prompts you to do next. That uh, little tidbit that she she gave out in the last session was interesting. Oh, about the mountains. Mm. Well, that's that's interesting as well. And the other thing that I've been prompted to to get to know about is um, Enochian magic or the magic of angels. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like, you know, that, that would be interesting as to what she has to say about that? Yeah, that's that's apparently something that would be very good for me to learn how to do. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have you um, had much luck with those Akashic records? Yeah, well, she said that I was too, I needed to read the book first. No. Yeah. Too distracted and, you know, needed to sit down and read the book. So I think I'll... I'll do that later on and read the book Mm -hmm. and, you know, get a full understanding. And then, you know, because I've been in there in the sessions before, I've been in there, but, you know, it would be been told that, you know, it's necessary for me to just go into meditation about this. Mm. Because obviously, you know, there's things in there that you would only be privy to when not, you know, the general public. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the... um, (laughs) <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> it's like, is you know, you could definitely explore it in a session, but um, yeah, but sometimes some things are obviously top secret just for you. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe I'll find out something else, and then you know that can be, you know, something else that I can explore. <laughs> mm, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us about your um. Your website coming out. Uh, so it's going to be called Katesh Healing. And, um, well, that's coming out next month. I've, um, I've paid a, um, a woman to, to help me do that. So um, mm-hmm. I had to, I don't know, I just wanted a professional-looking website. So, you know, I had to, you know, fork a lot of money out for that but you know it should be should be coming out next month he has a pretty pretty quick turnaround so oh that's good yeah so people can find you yeah um under that name Katesh does it mean anything to you um yes it it does that was one of the names that my higher self was known as ah okay and that was just um I think that one kind of like 
it's not as well known, but it's interesting the the Egyptian sort of stele, the picture mm-hmm. um, of Kitesh. She has like um, she has like she's standing on a lion, and she has a lotus in her hand, and in her other hand she has a snake. Yeah. So, like, I feel that that image was very symbolic of, you know, her roles, which is why I've decided to call it that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some of the other names she was known as. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's this thing with the lotus flowers that she that she's very involved in and then at her, um, I think at her right side, there's the Egyptian god Reshef, and he is actually Apollo. He's the same uh-huh. being. So that is um that was it's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting to sort of see them in the same sort of context. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, like there's a lot of people that, you know, talk about how that's all these different gods are. They are just the same gods that, mm. you know, like Jesus is perceived as, you know, it could be um, some people say they could be Allah for others and then, you know, they've got the same sort of um, things that people, that they're, they're known for. Or, yeah, um, like there's... um. There's some that definitely are the same being and they just traveled to different places. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely something that I found in these sessions that Toth and Hermes were the same being. Mm-hmm. I was surprised about that too. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And, and also like, you know, exactly the same as the Roman god Mercury. They're all, it's all the same being. Of Toth, or... yeah, Toth, oh. yeah, and well, you go into like the Mayan sort of tradition as well. I think he might be one of their ones as well because they traveled there. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they, they were saying that last time, weren't they? Yeah, so... yeah, 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 they, they traveled all over the place. Now, I've seen some interpretations from people, you know, sort of mashing them all together and you know and the those ones I can sort of see are like hmm I'm, I'm not sure about that like you know like for example Lucifer and Satan being the same being mm. like when when I went into my sessions they were different beings and then I was like wow okay that was a surprise to me but at the same time it kind of makes sense because you know they are mentioned in different contexts yeah, because yeah, because you would think that Lucifer and Satan are the same people, and it's yeah. set different. Mm. And that you know he was Satan was set the Egyptian mm-hmm. set that was just completely like mind blowing to me. But then you know I did the research on that too, and you know there's some um, the Satanist Michael Aquino. Um, he was like sort of the one who really was doing the mk ultra Um, he's not a nice guy no example of set because he said that satan came to him and revealed his true identity to him and you know even though he's like a really bad guy Mm -hmm. i think maybe you know he was onto something in that particular moment like i think you know (laughs) When you you look through all of this sort of scary occult history, you can see some sort of things line up. Yeah. Even though it's it's very dark, like there are some things that are just like okay, so they did have some of the truth. Even the even the bad guys, you know, especially I guess occulted maybe that knowledge because they didn't want everyone else to know. Mm-hmm. But, like we're finding out that knowledge now yeah because i guess it's the right time for it to come out yeah but it's probably because you know (laughs) it's the last hurrah it's like oh yeah they're gonna 
probably, you know, it's only going to get worse anyway. So <laughs> they probably can handle it now. Yeah, and it's just really interesting, especially with the things that I've been finding out and, like, mm-hmm. you know, all the type of research that I've done on a bit of, like, things like Freemasonry and, and whatnot and their symbolism. And you had the white pyramid and the black pyramid to begin with. Mm-hmm. And then the whole thing with the Freemasonry is you've got this white and black. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Chaos and order sort of Of thing. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That's so fascinating, isn't it? So I think at the higher levels, they might know a lot of this stuff. Well, they can certainly seem like they know a lot of this stuff that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Especially when I got all of the things in the session about in Atlantis, the Brotherhood of the Darkness and the Brotherhood of the Light and the two-headed eagle symbol Mm -hmm. that they use as well. That came from Atlantis. Yeah. And what did I use it for? Did I just use it for... The hidden well, it, knowledge, is it? It's interesting. The two-headed eagle is on a lot of royal family crests. It is, yeah. Like, um, it ends up in a lot of interesting places, that two-headed eagle. Mm-hmm. And you just have to do a bit of research into it and then you find out, like, you know, I guess this, this symbol in it is in a lot of unusual high-up places. Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah it's funny because you know people are like you try and tell people things like that and then it's like you've got an overactive imagination of you know that's not really what's going on yeah. <laughs> it's like oh well yeah. is that a... <laughs> it just depends how high your iq is really if that <laughs> map, you know <laughs> your imagination <laughs> Well, I guess, you know, well, it, it just goes to programming, doesn't it? Like, you know, yeah. Um, you know, some of us have sort of like broken a little bit away from it, <laughs> even though we're still sort of there. But, um, yeah, we can understand, take on a little bit more. But um, then the, there's others that are just oblivious to it. It's like, no, yeah. it's not. It's yeah. not true. Completely oblivious to the to the symbolism, but but I quite like research the sort of occult symbolism because you do learn a lot, even mm-hmm. if you know a lot of the new age light workers are really scared by that sort of thing. It's like, well, you go into these sort of old esoteric traditions and you will find things that are yeah. very interesting. Exactly, and yeah, obviously the light can't exists without the dark so you kind of have to know the balance in that and you will sort of get you know especially and I guess like the whole symbolism thing it does also help with tarot cards I have to say (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah because there's lots of symbology on these cards as well which is really interesting but I guess you know like with the symbols I guess I guess I have been trained in that aspect because I did art for a little while and you have to see the symbols and everything to do fine art and fine art history. Mm -hmm. You have to go into it and really look for the symbols within everything. And then I did sociology as well at university, which was more symbols and, you know, hidden meanings and things and, you know, finding out, you know, I guess, like, I was just interested in human society and how it's evolved. Mm -hmm. So I guess if, you know, even though you didn't get a job out of it, obviously that would have been your training into, you know, this sort of work. Yeah. (laughs) Anthropology and sociology, you absolutely have to have an interest in people. and, And, yeah, and then the fine art helps too with the whole symbolism thing. Mm-hmm. but yeah like just to observe things and observe societies at, at large and and what was taking place is it's very interesting to me mm, yeah for sure yeah well thank you for um talking to me today 
Um, we're going to wrap it up um, and we'll see what we can come up with on Sunday. Nice. <laughs> well, I'll look forward to that. I'll, I'll be getting some questions ready that I think might be might be interesting, especially about you know, what, what about those mountains? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, I can't wait for one because, uh, you know, it's always interesting. And she always goes in, you know, like she goes back to what she's already said before. Like, it's like, oh, it was like I was saying last time, you know, this and that. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. Like, it just leads on. It's like a movie someone said on, on YouTube. <laughs> I feel that there's some continuity. Like, she has it, you know, she has this um this continuous sort of, story I guess mm-hmm. but, or has you know more I guess it's it's a, it's very interconnected like you know yeah like one of those one of those big sagas you know everything is interconnected <laughs> yeah yeah like that that's that's pretty crazy I'm not sure if I could think of all of that on my own yeah exactly it's like you know when people think that BQH or people in trance or QHHC is they're just full of it you know they're just making up things or it's like well it's pretty hard to make up something like this just at the top of your head yeah no I can't make like a Marvel Cinematic Universe type of <laughs> Atlantis and you know, yeah gods and Blah 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 off the top of my head. That's just um, that's just really crazy. The best that people are going to get with my consciousness. It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> maybe this one and that one. You know, had a fun day at the beach or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's definitely not like that. It's not def- definitely not a conscious mind conversation like we're having now. Mm. You know, she's. Uh, she definitely delivers uh, even more information than we think we could handle. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely yeah. what I could handle as well. Oh, my goodness, you know, it's been pretty crazy for me. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy but interesting, yeah? Mm. Yeah. All right, well, I'll let you go and um, we'll talk to you on Sunday. Okay, talk to you then. All right, thanks. See you then. Bye. Bye.